And, uh, and so I'm going to present uh, some of the work that we are doing in the consortium CORLI. Uh, CORLI is a consortium from the Humanum uh, Infrastructure in France. And the Humanum Infrastructure, for those who doesn't know, probably many of you doesn't know, it's something, it's an infrastructure that works to help researchers in social sciences to handle digital tools and digital data. And so we do a little bit of the same in Corley, but for uh, linguistics uh, data. And most importantly, we are in fact a network. And uh, there is a steering committee of 10 members, and more than that are working with us a lot of time. And more importantly, the scientific committee, for example, is about 30 different lab laboratories, so it's quite large. And, uh, and, and we have a wide coverage in the various domains of uh, research in linguistics, but of course, always with data and, and with digital data and tools. And so our main activities goes to network and especially uh, dealing with the Caring Care Center. For me, it's not, there's not a major difference between like, what Coley does and what the Coley Caring Care Center do. We are working on documentation, best practice recommendation, training webinar, and so on. But today I'm going to focus on the part we are doing on research development, and especially two parts. And the third one I'm going to present for us who, doesn't, who want it in, in a bazaar tonight. So you, you, you can ask to me about this. So our first project, Open French Corpus Project, is a just a word before I start on this project. We try as best as we can in our project to do two things. First, to do some, to try to fill gaps. So what I mean is that there are many things that exist already and often things are slightly missing. Uh, and so, and because you are a network, we can ask to people, what do you think? Are you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if there's enough people thinking that something is missing, we can work on it because people are happy that we are working on these kind of things. And also another way we try as best as possible, for example, to, to add some useful, uh, to improve existing tools rather than uh, developing something really new. So here about the Open French Corpus, uh, the idea is of course to develop something which is uh, accessible, so high quality resource, accessible, standardized, organized, so perfect, that can be used with many tools. So how are we going to do that? Well, we are already started to that. The idea is very simple. In fact, it's to use the data that is already deposited in the official repositories in Ortolan Cocoon, which are both Clarin C centers, and Nakala, which uh, also is going and to, to, to have the core trust seal, for example. So what is important is that all this data is already well described with metadata in standard format. And, and we know already which data is open access or not. So we can do things about open access we also can use uh, corpus coming from other sources, but they just have to meet the requirement that on the data that are already deposited, like coming from well-defined scientific projects. So all this data has been usually deposited by a scientific project, and it uses well-known data metadata, as I said before. So it solves our two first requirements, high quality, freely accessible, because it's already done. And so what was the work about? The work was mostly about the formats and metadata first. So the data and metadata had to be standardized because people putting data and metadata in the repository will do it in different ways. <laughs> and so if we want, we want to have the same uh, format, so to be able to export, query, reuse, reference uh, data and so on, and especially reuse, which is very important for us. And also having a unified format will help us to uh, organize the data into subsets and, and collections. Uh, about the metadata, we have been working together with Ariane, which is another consortium from Humanum about literature. So we are uh, working on language, we like us, but not the same uh, science. 
And the idea between us together is to develop a core metadata structure that will be applied to all the data. And uh, supplementary optional sets could be applied to specific uh, subdomain. The metadata will be in TI and SMDR format because it's, uh, it's what the, the repositories are using. And if, if in the future the format has been changed, it's not a problem, it's very easy. And what we have been doing already is to create a tool that check the format and check the metadata so that we know automatically which, for example, metadata is uh, missing. And then we create a, a, a web page automatically that we can ask to the, uh, the, the people that, de that did deposit the data to fill the gaps. So I will do that and probably we will have to do a little bit of, uh, of this work uh, ourselves, but that's, that's not surprising, especially when the data has been deposited quite uh, some time ago. And uh, in, for the format, we are doing a little bit of the same. We, we, we will use a TEI just because it's, it's efficient and it's useful for us. Many documents are already in this format, so that's uh, less work. Uh, we already have tools that convert data into this format. It's rich enough that we can put any kind of information that we will need in the future, uh, subtext information, speaker, time, place, uh, layout, uh, medias, and so on. So it's, it's, it's very useful. And so it will be, uh, this can be used with the tools, which is of course very important to, so to have the open French corpus available will be uh, people will be able to download the data, of course, but uh, which is more important for us or for the researchers is to uh, be able to uh, query the data. So the data will be accessible by federated, by federated content search. It's already accessible by a, a large part because the part which is in the C centers is already available, but many things are not in, in correct format. So they will now be in format uh, that uh, federal content search will be able to access. And we will use the querying tools that are under development and not too long. Actually, the development is nearly finished. We are now in the phase of putting everything together and it's, uh, it's, it's using the XML a query um, tool that is used in Frontex, for example. And so we will be able to, uh, to query XML data. And so uh, that, that will be good. And also we want to be able to export data uh, so that people can use the data in their own computers using their, their favorite tools to, to explore the data. And we probably want to finish all, all this work by uh, adding uh, like uh, the Norwegian people do it, and, and many people do it today, of course, but uh, adding uh, passing analysis so that the, the people who are researchers in linguistics, many, many of these people doesn't know how to use the tools. And so they, they need the tools, they need, they need the corpora to be prepared so they can have uh, linguistics uh, detailed information about that, but they, they couldn't process themselves. The second set of uh, projects that we have uh, in, in Corley is about uh, collaborative corpus annotation. So uh, in, in this uh, part, we have three research direction and that I'm going to talk about them uh, once after the other. So the first one is, uh, is to develop a collaborative transcription and simple annotation. Actually, there exists already a tool, which is named TACT, and which is already a working tool, but has to be improved, so has to be able to use better in uh, especially crowd sources transcription. And uh, here we are working on this project with uh, MSH Lorraine, uh, it's a Maison de Sciences de l'Homme House uh, uh, Human Science in France. And so it's institutions that are working a lot on social sciences. And they want to handle uh, a corpora of, uh, I don't think it's parliamentary, I, I think it's a uh, Conseil Constitutionnel, but I don't know how to say it in English. <laughs> And, uh, and this has been uh, authorized and it has to be corrected 
by many people. And so we need uh, a tool that will be able to have many, many people help us to do that. And our goal is that the tool will be usable for other project later uh, with the same thing. A second uh, annotation, uh, collaborative annotation project that we have developed a lot last year was uh, trying to use Inception, which is a web-based annotation tool. And the idea is that uh, what we noticed at that time is that Inception was mostly used by uh, researchers in natural language processing. People had to be I would say computer aware to be able to input things into this tool. And so what we created last year was to use, to, to create a user-friendly converter. People can go in web, uh, put their text there, and the text will be uh, directly converted into the inception format with, uh, if people want, syntactic uh, semantic information from stanza. And so the XML result can be imported to uh, Inception and exported. So uh, that's the idea, and, and, and it's open tools, and it's uh, uh, anyone that needs these tools can, can use them. And, uh, and our third project that uh, we have been uh, working a lot to this year is about uh, Corligum, and it's, it's used the start from Inception, and it goes a little bit further. So the, the Colligum project uh, has two main objectives. First is to foster collaboration between researchers, teachers, and master students. Often researchers and teachers are the same people. And the idea is that to provide goal targets for the student to understand what is a text annotation, what is a grammatical analysis, and so on. And it's material for the teachers to, to make the student work. And it's also the result is usable for uh, by researcher. Um, and the idea on this project is to develop an open source multi-layer corpus of richly annotated text and uh, based on the GUM project, we are going to talk a little bit uh, on the next slide. And the resulting, resulting resource will be made accessible to a research community as everything we do, it's, it's our, our goal. And so, what is the GUM project? A GUM project uh, from the state is, is a project of a corpus that is enriched each year by the students. And so, it's a diversified corpus. They, they use different types of source, narrative, conversation, news, instru instru instructional texts. All the texts are under uh, Creative Commons, so they are open. And the idea is that the, the student doesn't do too much work, so they can, they can concentrate on detail and quality. The idea is to have people doing little work, but many people do doing this work. And all, all the, the project is based on using a universal model from a universal dependencies project, which is fine for us because we use that kind of uh, analyzers. And so for uh, this year, what we have been doing is to trying to, to build a GUM-like resource for French uh, using a unique tool for collaborative multi-layer annotation. So the idea is to make available a free diversified corpus for French with basic annotation layers uh, following the, the universal models to teach linguistic annotation to, to, to the students, to teach them universal models, how they work, and, uh, and to create a federation of teachers that will use these tools and students that will use these tools. So we'll have m many people doing uh, annotation in, in a different uh, place so that uh, uh, the, the largest corpus possible is richly annotated. And the idea, of course, is behind that is to share and spread practices, tools, and, and resources. And just to finish, it's uh, uh, the, the project in the state use several tools, uh, but one student classroom. It means the, the student use one tool, and then one tool, and then one tool. And, and, and we try to do the opposite, to have only one tool. So the data comes from the Inception project from last year, so it's prepared, and then it's annotated with uh, a single tool so to provide a final data set thank you thank you thank you so much um
please, the questions. Does your tool work with uh, multimedia data as well as a source or? N uh, multimedia, not yet. I, I, I hope it will, I, I would say spoken data, I mean spoken transcription will work because we, we have them in TI, so that's not a problem. Um, as far as I know, if you have information of uh, in the locutus, it's fine. But uh, as far as now, you cannot hear, uh, listen to the sound or see the video. I hope we'll do this in the future because myself, I'm a specialist of uh, spoken language uh, and language acquisition, so I really like this. But I say most of my colleagues were saying, Please, Christophe, do not start to do everything at first because it won't work. So, but I, I really, I really, I wanted to, to be able. And, and the same in for, for the Open French Corpus. I mean, we have we have sound, and especially uh, I, I, I made a, some years ago work about that. We have about 10 million words with open source uh, and with a sound or a video. So, we really. It's very useful to put this uh, available. Yeah, I was thinking in the context of sign languages. Would be very yeah, interesting. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have data from sign language, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's more complex because it's uh, there's less transcription. It's more annotation. It's slightly different. And we are very interested in other people using it and giving us, uh, I would say, feedback of what we're working on. And, and this was my question exactly. I was wondering, uh, uh, how do you promote your services and, and, and how you track the, the uses of, of the services? That's something difficult? that we, we do not do a lot <laughs> <laughs> because, because of a network. Mm -hmm. uh, because of a network, quite a lot of people are aware about what Corley did. Uh, because there are quite a large uh, mailing list and so on. And, and it's true that uh, we have, I would say, enough time to do this work, barely, <laughs> and, and the work uh, that could be dedicated and the user involvement is not that much. Mm -hmm. And we are, we are relying on, on the network to help us do that.